Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, A Friendship in Three Acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. These podcasts will be broadcast bi-weekly, so you get two a month. Enjoy. This episode of Tales of a Checkered Past is one that I call the three-month rule. Here we go. I've often been accused of being a cool customer in the romance department. This may be because I have five planets in Aquarius, which makes me function more from the intellect than my emotions. That said, I'm practical where matters of the heart are concerned. I have a saying. If you hear the word love in the first three months, they'll be gone in six. That's right, you heard me. I'm not a believer in love at first sight. Let me share some of my experiences to illustrate just how I came to believe this. My first steady boyfriend, when I was 22, was a guy named Brock. He lived in this very gloomy but fabulous pile of a building built in the 1920s called the Windermere on 24th and Hudson in Oklahoma City. His apartment was fabulous. Two stories with a vaulted ceiling, Very Sunset Boulevard. It was huge. There was a wrought iron banister framing the sweeping staircase railing in the hallway upstairs and an arched cutout in the master bedroom wall that looked down onto the living room. Now, this contrasted with my very tiny and very inexpensive studio apartment in my landlady's backyard on 61st and Villa. The big room in my apartment was as wide as the length of a twin bed, and the room was as deep as one and a half twin beds. The bathroom looked like an airplane bathroom. It was so small, and the entire place was so small I could touch the ceiling standing flat-footed. Now, Brock and I started dating right after I graduated from college. We met, we slept together on the first date, which is somewhat of a pattern for me. Uh Uh-huh. But then on date three, he said it. Grow old with me. Come live with me, he declared. Now, this was in the middle of SEX, so I didn't take it too seriously. Men say the darndest things during sex, things they often end up regretting later. Uh huh. I just chalked it up to that. This declaration happened at my tiny little place. Right after Brock said it, My first thought was, hang on to that cheap apartment. He holds the lease on his, and if he gets tired of me, I'm out without a cheap place to live. See what I mean? Even during SEX, I'm practical. I was then at age 22. There were a few other milestones with Brock, but he was the first guy I spent the night with. Now, I started spending quite a few nights with him that summer of 1980. Then, as time went on that summer, I started thinking that, you know, we might become an item. However, I still didn't consider getting rid of my little place. But, good things come to an end. The first weekend of August that year, things changed. I had a modeling gig that Saturday morning, and afterwards planned on getting together with Brock. Before I left for the gig, I called him to see what the plan was going to be. And he said, there's something we need to talk about. Uh Uh-oh. What? I asked. I don't want to do it on the phone, was his cryptic answer. Do it on the phone. Hmm. That sounded ominous. 
So I went to do the modeling gig and afterwards went over to Brock's place. He met me at the front door. Ken, I think we need to go back to being just friends, he said. Go back to being friends, I asked. <laughs> yes, it'll be better that way. Brock, we never were friends before we started dating. I fucked you on the first date. I don't sleep with friends. Then Brock launched into some crap about me needing to get used to this. Gays are always leaving or being left by each other. Then he asked for his one last kiss, which I refused, and I left. The rest of that story... Two weeks later, I came down with hepatitis. It was his parting gift. It seems that I wasn't the only one he was seeing that summer. Glad I kept that little apartment. Now, lest you think this is a one-off, it has happened several more times over the years. Some weren't very noteworthy, but there was once a guy who I will call Crazy Boston. Crazy Boston was one of those Crazy in the head, crazy in the bed, guys. Not too bright, but holy cow, he was hot. And the sexual chemistry, wow. He would come visit from Boston. He'd spend the weekend with me, and we would spend most, if not all, of the visit in bed. One weekend, when he came to visit, we spent the entire time fornicating in all imaginable positions, stopping only for the occasional nap or takeout food. After the weekend was over, when my friend Pearl called to see what I was up, I said, oh my god, doll, this place looks like a herd of elephants stampeded through. From then on, that was Pearl's euphemism for raucous sex or the possibility of it. Herding elephants. At the end of that raucous weekend, when we were in one of those Kama Sutra positions, he said it, Ken, I love you. Not possible, I replied, sitting up. You've only known me a few weeks. But I love you, he protested. No, crazy Boston, there are other feelings you can have at this early stage. Infatuation, lust, horniness, intrigue, enchantment. But not love. Not possible, I replied. Good sex feels like love, but it isn't. It only took a couple more weeks before he was history. He came to visit once more and commented on the evening wrap I had on, on display, which he couldn't tell from the one that was on display the last time he had been there. His comment was something to the effect of, well, why don't you do something with it, like sell it? Hold on, Buster, I shouted. When you can hold a job for more than six months, then you can weigh in on how I run my business that I've been running for over 25 years. Until then, you have no standing, and you just need to keep your comments to yourself. Then I showed him the door, and he was history. I missed the sex, boy oh boy. But it was better this way. And then there's the funniest situation where a guy said love in the first three months. I met him at, well, I met him at a sex party. What? He was smitten. We hooked up. Later, we made a first date, got up to some mischief. And during the mischief, he said it. I love you. Ah! Now, this was date number two. Too soon, I said. You know, I have a rule. If I hear the word love in the first three months, they'll be gone in six. But I'm different, he protested. Okay, I said, you're different, but time will tell, I replied. Really, I am different, he insisted. Okay, I said, time will tell. Time went on, and in month four, I went on a trip to Paris. One week, seven days, Paris. While I was gone, he went on a trip to Portland, Oregon. When I returned from Paris, I called him to see when we would get together. We sat a time, and he came to my studio. He came in, I hugged him, 
He looked at me and he said, Ken, we need to talk. Uh Uh-oh. I chuckled. (laughs) You're breaking up with me, I said. What? Laughing, I said, sit down and tell me all about it. I pointed to the sofa. Sit, I said, still laughing. What's so funny, he demanded. Well, isn't that what you're here to say, I asked. Well, yeah. Well, then tell me all about it. I leaned against my desk, arms crossed, stood there and said, I'm waiting. And this was the story. It seems, while I was in Paris for those seven days, he had gone to Portland. He'd gone to a bar in Portland. He met this guy, fell in love, quote, unquote, married him, and moved the guy back to the Bay Area and into his house all in seven days. Well, you must not have really loved me, I commented. Well, yes, I do, he insisted, but obviously not enough. And then I laughed again. <laughs> but, but what, I asked. Remember when I said that if I heard the word love in the first three months, they'd be gone at six? Yeah, he replied. Well, you're right on schedule. Then I laughed some more. This isn't funny. This is serious, he demanded. I can't believe you're not upset. I just looked at him. Sweetheart, I said, I told you how this is going to play out. You said you were different, but you're not. And then I laughed again. (laughs) Upset. He got up and stormed out. He was upset that I wasn't upset about this, which made me laugh some more. So I'll say it again. It's been my experience, but if you hear the word love in the first three months, they'll be gone in six. Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook All Grown Up Now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website, allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King on Facebook at Kenneth D. King Design or on my main website, KennethDKing.com.